so last time we had a discussion about a couple of uh, prs and one thing one question that came up uh, was can we create a scenario for when um, the said prs um, would would break so i started going down the path of thinking through that and one thing that came up is we need to be in alignment on how do we treat uh, alpha features with api fields in v1 um stable ga api and this is also a question that came up uh, in the last call so in this uh, in today's agenda i'm going to go through one feature in upstream kubernetes that i found in alpha which had a breaking change in in beta and talk through what exactly that change was uh, what was breaking and what was the solution that kubernetes came up with uh, the hope is that if i can talk through that uh, example we can kind of come to some kind of a uh, conclusion on uh, what do we want for a uh, kubeword community for for the same um, <clears throat> same problem so with that i'm going to uh, talk through the example first so this is an example of a uh, this is an example of a field in persistent volume claim uh, api where there is a field spec dot data source the bug is that if this data source is uh, empty in uh, in alpha feature then then the webhook will create a blank pvc out of it if this data source is valid then it will create a pvc from a specific data source mentioned in this uh, field so in order to fix this bug this is a simple bug right so when you when you go to beta uh, the way this pr pr or enhancement proposes to solve this bug is when this feature goes to beta um there will be a fix in this validation workflow where if if the data source is invalid instead of silently accepting it it will reject uh this request so so what will happen is all the clients which were working with invalid data source api field uh until now will break when when kubernetes will be upgraded to beta so i want to take a pause here um edward and everyone else um this seems like a very valid example for what we were discussing last time right uh, in terms of um alpha features introducing fields in v1 api and then um potentially having to break them uh during uh beta um, upgrade is this uh, the change of the value or i mean there are like multiple options is this can i understand correctly is the value changing here that is correct the api fields are not changing the behavior of that api field is changing so for example the data source as an invalid value Uh, was being silently ignored in alpha but in beta it will not be silently ignored it will be rejected so yeah, api that's field a breaking change. sorry yeah that's a breaking change yes uh yes but my the context i have here is that this is supposed to be an alpha feature right so even if that is a breaking change uh for our discussions uh the the decision is that since it was alpha um, we should you know allow for 
these kinds of changes but before we go to um, <clears throat> that discussion i want to walk through what kind of uh, considerations were made by uh, kubernetes folks and what was the solution so that we can then uh, discuss whether we want to take a similar approach for kubeworld or we want to be less uh, strict for alpha features so the reason why so th this pr says that this is going to be a very marginal uh th even though this is a break breaking change it's going to affect very rare cases where somebody someone has mistakenly uh, used data source mistakenly used invalid data source in their manifest and then through multiple rounds of discussion what they found out was the pvc field uh, pvc template was used in multiple different uh, apis so as an example you have a stateful set which has a uh, a template uh, pvc template field in there which will also use the the spec of a pvc and how this bug will manifest in that uh, scenario is that you create a stateful set with you create a stateful set with a pvc validation webhook pvc validation will not get triggered stateful set validation will admit it uh when the set, stateful set controller will try to create this pvc it will then go through the pvc validation and since the behavior has changed from allowing this field and silently ignoring it to rejecting this field in a beta version all the stateful set uh which were all the stateful set manifests which had invalid uh, data source field until now will be broken so that is why uh the kubernetes community took a different approach so instead of modifying this data source field they introduced a similar field called data source ref this is just a copy of data source so in older cases uh where validation used to work with data source um all the data from data source will be copied uh during admission to data source ref and then the validation is enforced on uh data source ref so that way existing fields existing pvc objects which have invalid data source entry um uh, in the previous versions will uh, continue to work but then if someone wants to enforce validation they will run on this data source ref uh, field want to i want to take a pause here um there are any questions with this no it sounds it's clear the the admission will will copy the if it exists the previous data and move it to the new new structure hmm. yep. duplicate it again yes and so what will happen is then older manifests will not break newer manifests will work with this field and this will field will have stricter um, validation rules in beta so they have accommodated for older as well as newer manifests in beta and this was considered even for an alpha feature that was graduating to beta so then with this context the question i want to raise here is do we want like what are the expectations we are setting for alpha features introducing uh, api fields to a v1 api like virtual machine instance api right do we follow a similar uh diligence where if there is a slightest chance 
that this API is maybe used in other controllers or this API is used by other clients uh, or this API is used by manifest. So there are three major con consumers of the API, right? Actually four. One is the manifest themselves. Second is uh, other API. So for example, V1 um, virtual machine instance pack used by virtual machine template. That's the second one. Third one is uh, the client go structs. Uh, and fourth is um, unstructured dynamic um, API clients. So the, those are the major uh, points of consumption of the API. And if anyone, any of these have a chance to break, what should be the um, the community's uh, guidance in upgrading alpha features to beta? Uh, that's the question I would like to discuss today. And Edward, I think you have had some uh, thoughts around this, whether this will impact velocity or not. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, so. The, as a as an intro for all of this is that when someone is working on when the uh, group is working on uh, on an alpha thing, then they are they are they passed. Let's say that they already had a design and they got uh, feedback from at the design level. And they continue on and try and tries it out now, right? Now, the question is for me: uh, Are they uh, by introducing this alpha? Are they saying that this uh, they are already in the in the game of upgrades and stuff like that, or they are first trying things out? Um, so that's that's my question. Is like, uh, or this is the thing that I'm. I'm thinking about it at the moment. Like I'm working on an alpha. I want to give it to maybe other developers or maybe to uh, some uh, testers to play with this. Maybe at, even at the development stage, I will not expect anyone to take it to production only into staging maybe because most of the features that I'm seeing that are Marcus alpha, they are explicitly saying don't use them in production. So if I'm taking all of that, then I will get I would like to get from them feedback. If that feedback says that I need to change something, then I want to well, I want to be pretty flexible to change it. But uh, so I will either in this case I uh, I will say either we you let me change whatever I want because I'm uh, no one should expect to have upgrade support here at all. Or uh, or you'll you'll give such a like you show now uh, that no you cannot break it not between even alpha version and not between alpha and uh, when it gets bumped to beta you are not you should not break it because if you break it then um, then it causes uh, problems mm -hmm. but but you, but the question is that's I think this is a valid question is. Is it a must that we we need to support upgrades or in alpha? I'm not sure. Like, I could I could change the name like the what you showed. I will. I mean, I cannot keep it maybe, or I can say let's have a policy. Let's change it to to another name because we uh, we found out that this is not enough or it's not complete or we need something else, and then we just drop the previous one. Uh, but I agree that we should not be allow it to be like. Uh, I I don't think we should allow the key to remain and then change the just the value type. That that will be problematic. I will go with the. Uh, I mean, I would like to see a simple solution. And then one one simple solution could be say, I'm not promising you anything about upgrades. We will do our best, but because it is in alpha, I'm not. Uh, it's not, uh, I cannot, you should not expect it from me, but I will tell you if you are okay to upgrade or not. 
And if I'm going to drop, I want to change the value of a field, then I will just stop using the previous one and use a new one. And that's it. And I will have mm -hmm. to tell you that in the release notes or something. Like yeah. A... So I think what I'm what I'm hearing from this is that there are there are two things, right? One is the stance that uh, the community decides that for alpha features, it's okay to uh, not care about the fields, even if it is in V1 API. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is, um, well, if you want to use a different field that is indirectly caring about uh, those uh, upgrades, right? Because if you are going to use a different field, that means the old fields will continue to work at least for one or two releases, and then they will be deprecated or removed. So, so in, uh, yeah. In alpha, I think you, I mean, what I think is that in alpha, I can just delete them and make sure that I'm ignoring them. That's it. I mean, I don't want it to be, when I do an upgrade and they are there, I don't want it to break the upgrade. So I don't want that like, if I change the type from an int to a string, I don't want it to blow up uh, after I'm upgrading, but I don't care if it's like ignored uh, in the next version while it is in alpha, because I that's the, I mean that's an option. I'm not saying that's uh, what needs to be said. So I I don't care if it's not it is ignored, and I don't have to. Although I can, I have to take care of this. Uh, of taking the old one and putting it in the new one. Something in, uh, I hope you, I, I think you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I follow what you're trying to say, but <clears throat> the reason why I wanted to share that example is that uh, upstream Kubernetes has taken a lot of care in caring even for those alpha features in uh, in a V1 API, right? So my my question is that is it really uh, is the velocity of the features that are coming in that important that uh, we can you know at least not have empathy on folks who are using it in alpha because in this way you are incentivizing. Uh, people to not try alpha because let's say if I am trying alpha and for some reason I want to upgrade my clusters, uh, that means either I have different clusters for, uh, you know, trying features and, and running them in production or uh, I just don't try it at all, right? So I think you. I think uh, I even today I looked at some uh, alpha uh, features that I saw uh, from other projects. So everyone is saying the same thing. They are saying don't use it in production. So that's like a hint to me that I should not use it in production because it's either not stable or it may change in a way that it may break me. So I will say that. Let, let's separate it. There are like the development part uh, or the, uh, con uh, the contribution part, and there is the, cons the one that consumes it. So I, as a contributor of a feature in alpha, I'm interesting to preserve my consumer and I want him to try it. And I want them to, I want to make his life as easiest as possible, even through upgrades. So that's like, it is my interest, but I think I don't want or we should not commit to it formally that we will keep uh, we'll keep it as is because if I find out that there is a really really big problem what I did I don't I prefer not to be like constrained by it like if it's something small then uh, and I I expect this not to happen a lot but if it happens I don't want to be like uh, very strictly Required to do this, I want it to be, to be like a, a suggestion, 
then if I follow, then I will preserving my, my the customers that, that are trying it out. But I don't have to do it, or the project itself is not committed to do it. Uh, and uh, and I think the, uh, the uh, an example for this is that if I have an alpha, and I found that I find out after one or two releases of this alpha, that no one is using it, or there that there is a better solution for what I did. I think I mean I will usually drop the whole thing. Like I would say, okay, this ver this feature is not good enough. We don't need it. We drop it, at least in alpha. Um, I, I would like to see like the, the stages between the alpha and beta. So in the beta, I think what you showed showed here is for sure is a must. Like if you are in beta, which means that it is ready for production. I mean, they can it can be tested on production. Then the role that you showed, uh, I think it's a, it's, it's a must or even it is not allowed to do it. Like if I want to do something like that, I must do what you showed. But if I'm in alpha, I, I will. I personally would prefer to for it to be softer, but not not to break. I want the upgrade to pass uh, without we're blowing up. But I I'm okay with losing information in some edge cases. But it doesn't right. mean that you you so, are the one that. So let me yeah. let me interrupt you there. Um. So with this uh with this API right. What happened is that so that they identified a bug in alpha and they had to fix it before this goes to uh to beta yeah. uh, so that they will not cause problems when uh, beta users upgrade to GA. So I wanted to understand so when we say um, alpha features should be a little bit lenient, but when that alpha feature is preparing for uh, beta, we should consider these kinds of uh, options and be a little more strict in graduating that feature. Is that correct uh, understanding of um, what you are trying to say? I think I'm 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 not sure that I I am fully. I'm fully clear about you. What you said now, I I I want it to be like what you sh what you showed to be a, a recommendation, not to break alpha users before the beta. Before I mean to do this as a recommendation, but I want it. Uh, I want an option to say that this is not a must because you could you could look at this as a different thing. You could say I'm dropping the the old field, just dropping it. I don't want it, and I I want a new field. I don't, I'm not changing it. I'm just dropping the old and creating the new, which means, which actually implies that I will not support the upgrade. I mean, if it, you had it configured and now you upgrade to the next the alpha two, then it will not be preserved. You need to write it again. And and I, I, I'm okay, I, it's okay in kinds of the rules to do it, but it's better to do what you showed. I mean, the recommendation would be to do that uh, but it's not a must. And but when you when are you in beta, you must do you must go through this process for sure. You cannot break it then. That is that is that what you meant? Um I am I'm not sure about that. The reason is that uh, even if this particular feature is in uh, alpha the whole API is in V1, right? And yes. so if you remove, if the recommendation is that developers can uh, introduce fields in a V1 API behind an alpha feature gate and then remove them, uh, I don't know what the upgrade path will look like. So what will happen is that if anyone who is using this V1 API uh, and using this alpha gate, we are now saying that you will break even if you are using uh, V1 API. So I think 
It's not deleting. I, I mean that I'm not saying that you should delete the. I think I think that one you clarified last time that you cannot delete it in the sense that you delete the in the structure. You just make it a no. It's like a. It's like a, something that is there, like a placeholder because you already used it and it has a. I mean, even if it was empty, you you keep it there, just not to blow up. But but it's. Okay, it's not you makes anymore. sense. Yeah, this is what I got think it. you said last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So what you are saying is that, uh, with the fields, we are okay to move them around, but we should not break the entire uh, V one API uh, on an upgrade. Uh, the the fields itself, if we keep the older one and if we introduce a new one with different uh, ints or with a different type, that is fine. Uh, we should not blow up uh, even in alpha, correct? Uh, yeah, so the, yeah it's, but the, the question is, this one I don't have a good answer is, is it okay to ignore the, I mean, like you have like uh, in your case, uh, this case was let's say foo and foo ref. So mm -hmm. is it okay to for the foo one to have no treatment in the alpha two, for example? It will just not be treated. It it is there. It will pass the API itself, but it will not it will not be processed anymore. Whatever is there is like ignored. Is that fine, or do you do you must treat it like you must take the info from there and copy it to the new one, or treat it, or whatever? So I think the guidance is that we keep this for three versions. Well, at least that's the upstream Kubernetes guidance. I'll need to go and double check what they did with the data source, but um. But the idea is that you give users enough time to migrate to the new field and then eventually drop this. And the reason why I'm saying that is there is no additional cost of treating that, right? You, you already treated this field in, uh, in the alpha feature. So that will continue to be the case. Uh, all you have to do is add the logic of treating the new field. And then eventually, after some time, deprecating the old field. So, I... okay. So the deprecation, you mean that it's just not it's there in the structure, but it's not anymore. Uh, no one is reading from it anything, or right? This is what you mean. Uh... Like after after two or three version, you just don't. You no longer uh, use the input that is there because you're saying that is already deprecated, and you must use the the other field or something else. Yes, that's okay. correct. So, yeah. and you think that in alpha you cannot do it like immediately? You must wait for for two versions or something like that. At least I I would like to keep it at least one version so that we avoid uh, blowing up the v1 objects so so then if someone says oh i have used this and my my objects are blowing up right now then our recommendation is that okay you upgrade your objects to the next uh, version the upgrade will go through because we have preserved it then you change uh, the field to the new one because in that new version you will have both Right, the original yeah. field as well as the copy, and then you can uh we can deprecate the alpha fields. Yeah, that's make that's fine. That that will the only thing the only disadvantage of it that I said I mean it sounds good to me. The only disadvantage will be that if for example you have uh, let's say you released alpha one, you do this uh, you understand there is a problem, you release alpha two with the fix and you keep the previous one. And then you must release another alpha again, because only then you you will be able to remove the. Like, you will have to do it in in a, and you will have to have another release. So you, it will delay uh, you for the beta. Or so something like that. remember, this is this is not a full blown CR, right? This is a field yeah. within the CR. 
so there is no we like I, the part where i'm getting confused is where is the v1 alpha 1 v1 alpha 2 this is either the feature flag is alpha or the feature flag is beta or the feature flag is ga that is totally remote yes no but i mean that you will have to go through another uh, project uh, uh, version like i'm not talking about the api version i'm saying that let's say that you released uh, you released a v1 object with an alpha field okay mm -hmm. so, so the you... alpha field so yeah i'm, I'm sorry to uh, okay. stop you but what i was trying to say is so you have an alpha feature uh in alpha field in v1 api then you want to introduce let's say you found something buggy with it you want to introduce a separate field so you go to beta beta you have two fields alpha field as well as the beta field now you promise that the beta field will continue to support upgrades and then the third version you have the beta or ga field whatever the evolution is and then you remove the alpha field in the third version Ah, so okay, okay. No, I think you. Oh, so the, there is a problem. Then, you, you, what you said, I think can be done in the with with. Uh, I think without the complexity, we can do things in alpha version. Not in. You cannot bump the field to beta and then fix there. It's. I don't think that's possible anymore. So like you, you have a feature. It's alpha. So all the fields that are related to that feature are considered alpha. You can, for each version that is re released for the project itself, let's say if we have to cover, then we are releasing now, we will we'll branch now to uh, for, what is it? I forgot about the, the version now, but we are releasing now a, a new, we're marking a new version. Mm -hmm. So all the fields that are in alpha, they are related to this release, right? Until the next release that is like three months later, if I'm not mistaken, then mm -hmm. you you could release, uh, you will either bump the version to beta or keep it in alpha and change the fields to, al to alpha 2, something like that, in the meantime, and until that release. So that, I don't think you can, I think that if you are in beta, you are really committed, very similarly like in GA, to the to your users because in beta they are already in production or they are can try it in production and you must support them in upgrades and everything so if the field is there in beta i don't think you can easily drop it anymore i think this is this is, is specified in their documentation in kubernetes in, in kubernetes it, it did make sense to me when i read it but i don't know it's like a, yeah, no, I, I think I what I said was exactly in line with okay. what you were describing it. It's just that the beta release, uh, what, what I was saying is that the beta release, if it is having a copy of the uh, alpha field as well as the new beta field, then it might just be that we care a little bit more about uh, upgrade since we don't have yeah. to do any work uh, to you know maintain that uh, alpha field. Yes. Uh, so and, anyway, and that's what this example did. But yeah, um, yeah I, I think I get the gist of it. What it, what what really we should get at is that preserve the flexibility of developers at alpha level, and then from beta be more strict uh, yes. on on the upgrades. And yeah. and yes and and uh, it is it is not I mean the option to do this in alpha is also fine like if the if you are like uh, if you are you already know that our people are are trying out your your feature and you want to be nice to them as the contributor then you could you could be strict uh, on yourself I mean even if the the rules of engagement of the project is not. Uh, is not requiring you to to process upgrade like uh, as a must. I think you can do it. Eh? I mean, it, it gives you in alpha, it's up to you. And it, in beta, it's not an, anymore up to you. It, it is a must that the project requires you to keep it uh, upgradable. Got it. Yeah, something yeah. Like that. 
yeah i i think that's a very valid uh way of putting it so um like in this particular example they found that because this is breaking the stateful sets uh of people and they would like to be more uh you know careful about not breaking them they have decided to work around it and support the upgrade but it's their decision they did not formally commit to it that they will do this for all changes uh, that are in alpha so i i think it like what you are proposing is really the gist of the example i wanted yeah. to uh, present as well so i we are on the same page we just need to write it down uh, so we need to write yeah. it down not, not only here i think we need to like maybe we need we, had, we need to add it some some document or collect it later because yeah it's like yeah important. so i think i have preserved it here at least in the notes and i'll take it as an action item to write find a place for this yeah i think that this is also interesting like uh, i i think i told you that there is another there were discussions that uh, recently paused a little bit about uh, the feature lifecycle. And this sounds like, first of all, I think this SIG is really a, be, a, mo uh, a fit for it, for that discussion. So we should move that discussion to here, or at least put the head of the SIG API under it. And uh, this, what we just talked about here is, uh, uh, it's also relevant to that. It's like, they are really related because they, uh, yeah. we had we had exactly this. Uh, you just you just got into much more uh, depth, I think, for what I see. Uh, so, do you know if there is this is being discussed on a design doc or uh, is this a separate call? I, it was it was like a brainstorming of a few meetings uh, of of. Uh, of the grid because we wanted to understand, I want to analyze uh, things and see what it happened, but it should it should already be public. I think it's just uh, technicality is the availability of, of uh, the people that uh, worked on it to make it uh, more public. But I think the, the good, the important thing is to move it also to, to the SIG API and then then open the discussion there but just in that context there were other things discussed like uh, not only api that's why i would guess that's the difference i mean like yeah i understand like well, for example do you need the design first or you need the, how do you call a deprecation in general of a feature or is it are you able to uh, declare deprecation of a feature um all kind of policies like that, I think this needs to be discussed with a lot of uh, reference to the to what we are doing here. Yeah, I think that's a very uh, that's a very apt discussion to what we are doing, right? Because here also kind of we are trying to find out what's the best way to deal with those uh, kinds of situation. And if those translate into a single set of policies, um, whether it impacts the API or it impacts how um, it is consumed um, by docs or um, other interaction with community, I think it's it's all under the same umbrella. So yeah, um, if you if there is a pull like a design doc or something where this is being worked on or it's intended to go out. Um, please feel free to tag me on on that. I'll uh, I'll try to bring it up here and and we can discuss. Yeah. I just the, from the last time that I told you about it, uh, I think a few weeks back. I think there was no meeting held because of of problems. So uh, that's why there was no update in that regard. But uh, there, the I think the work has begun post it publicly. I will try to find out if maybe it was done and I'm not aware of it. Um, okay, sure. 
yeah that's awesome uh okay i think that's all i had so my intent was to be <laughs> to have this discussion and be on the same page with what's the expectation in terms of alpha and beta um, features and with this discussion i think we are set to brainstorm the scenarios of this uh, particular uh, pull request so in the next call i will try to come up with uh, a design doc like not a design doc but some kind of scenario doc uh, that we can talk about the different combinations of this um, api feed yes i think that will be like uh, it will be we could even encourage people to to join if we will we'll, we'll make it like a I don't know it's like uh it's like a talk like I mean it could be like a uh uh semi talk because it's introducing something what are the concerns and why it is done why they why they recommend it to do that and that it's like a talk almost mm -hmm. so maybe that's like so, a technical interesting for other people Yeah that's a great idea I think for the next call itself I really like the exchange of ideas and the discussions we are having in this call um to come up to some kind of a conclusion so at least if we have that discussion once I think after that we can definitely share those discussions and learning in terms of a mini talk to to contributors um yes. for a, at least once i would like to you know set up a discussion panel where um we you know we come in with ideas and have a free flowing discussion and i have one more recommendation for you because uh, these meetings are great but it will be good to to market them a little bit uh, and and maybe in the meeting in the community meeting that is held like i think it's tomorrow right uh, mm -hmm. at least yeah. give a, a executive summary of of what even if it's like a sentence or two and 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 encourage people to to join that may help okay sure yeah i think that's a great idea so for tomorrow i'm not sure if i'll be able to make it but i will take it as a action item to try and find a way and talk about this uh in the community meetings more regularly yeah if you want to be available we can uh, we can raise it also I'd like to say that uh, to note that what uh, can bring uh, more uh, traction to this uh, new sig is that you said earlier to deprecate features this could be the tool and the place to discuss it <laughs> yeah definitely agree by the way the i uh, the the reason that 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 other thing that the other meeting that i was telling you about was raised even it was because we found out that we have a problem to deprecate things like in general like we are stuck like mm -hmm. we have features in covert that we we are not using or we don't know anyone that are use, using them or or we want to encourage them to stop using and we have no way to do it like we don't have any policies we don't have any rules wow. we have nothing so it's really a coincidence so while i was looking for this uh, particular example i found out a uh, uh, enhancement in kubernetes so it looked like uh, kubernetes also had the same problem uh, i think this is that enhancement i'll share it here uh, maybe this could help um it turns out kubernetes also had a same problem that people will just come in and uh take the api to just beta and then the api would stay in beta for a very long time and eventually they made a decision that only for three versions we will allow things to be in beta 
if you don't have uh if you don't have a plan to move it forward it will automatically be deprecated uh and within six releases it will be removed uh from the api altogether so yeah. it's interesting i think the problems are very similar to what you were discussing yes exactly this is like one of the it's like a garbage collector of <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> yeah. of beta features and exactly this is like one way to do it but but the problem was that or is even now is that the notion of alpha beta and ga it's not really written anywhere it's not uh, even in sometime not even uh, implemented like uh, there is no this is not uh, it's i will say it is implicitly it implicitly exists because we are introducing feature using feature gates that's why we could say that everything that we have now almost everything can be considered an alpha because no one or a beta alpha or beta because no one really removed the feature gate and made it uh, ga or declare it as such but uh, but it's like uh, in between we don't have really um, we don't have the rules yet we don't we need to work on yeah. the rules yeah i i agree i think that will be a really good discussion for this uh this call as well um so yeah just tag me um if a design doc or a full public discussion comes up for this be happy to bring it up uh, so i hope i hope that i will manage uh, i hope that if we will if that will continue on or I'll discuss with them or i will just ask them to to have the discussions, everything under this uh, SIG API. At least we can try to start with that and see how it goes. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. So, um, yeah, um, I also have, I would like to get back to the original design doc and accommodate all of these discussions. I haven't had a chance to um, summarize the discussions yet but i'll try to do that uh sometime this week um uh, and um uh, ping you to take a look yeah. you may you may want to consider to i think you started like that so you may want to consider to have that uh that enhancement uh the design part to maybe you want to to split it between what is needed at the high level and what is, and the details to this to make different uh, enhancements but i'm not sure if that's better or worse but just it, it, otherwise it, you may never uh, get this done like because at, the, at this stage i think this api uh, proposal is is more generic with with, uh, with less how i guess so or it's with more what we need. So maybe just think about it if that makes more sense to have uh, have that split. Because uh, if, we, if we'll go to the details like we did now today, uh, mm -hmm. it will take like a, it, this one will get in, in in months. I don't know. It's it take a lot of time. But if you if you like require, for example, you could say. Any, uh, if in this document you are saying that uh, if someone wants to changes the API, it needs to go through this forum. Uh, it needs to go. It needs to do the. We need to have a dedicated person that reviews uh, reviews it and approves the API changes, stuff like that. Then that will be less. Uh, that will be uh, at a higher level. So just think if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm trying to think. So I think my intention is to not enforce the going through part. I think for the initial release or two, my intention is to volunteer that this group will review all the PRs. And if that is going well, then um, collect feedback and uh, make it uh, a requirement, right? <laughs> oh uh, yes, yes, I understand. You could say that, yeah. uh, but you could you can define this flow. Like you could say, phase one is uh, going over through this, collecting information, discussing it, 
Festo is to to based on the collected information and knowledge where uh, uh, policies are written, policies and rules are written that uh, need to be followed, but uh, something like that. Then, and then you yeah. just split the you split the tick. Got it. Yeah, I something think that's like that. a great way. Um, I think I'll try to do that. So basically, just like how we have alpha, beta, GA plans for the feature, have the same phases for this. And I, I think the phase one is already underway. So uh, I'll summarize that there. Makes sense. Just a suggestion. I don't know if it's better or not. I'm just, I'm just trying to think that if we'll go into, we'll have a lot of topics and details and then that PR will get, that will be like great, great, great. There will be more and more contact and it will never end. That's like, that's yeah. usually, uh, that's, that's yeah, also... I think we need a very small dedicated thing to just get in. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. I, I think one of the biggest problems I have is to find, um, reviewers. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I'll try to work on that as well. Um, once I have that very small thing that is ready to go, I'll try to, you know, just ping people regularly and see if I can get reviews. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had. Do you guys have anything else? I don't. It was very informative. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your time. I'll uh, see you in the next call. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. you very much. Bye bye.